they will be strong. You know what they say? The language and culture they have are not the culture. It's real. There's a study that we may lose our language in 75 years. That, that, that percentage right now dropped so low, maybe to about 5%. Maybe 50, 60 years from now, there might just be a handful of people that understand the language fluently. Other tribes, they, they lost it. So you probably saw several slides up there that really state this clearly. To me, it's essential. It's essential. We're at a crisis situation in that, in that arena. So it's, it's for those reasons, it's for those reasons that this idea is being explored. And all eyes are on us from the state level, from the federal level. We should be deaf as Navajo people have done, man. Some people doubt us. But there's a lot of people that are clapping for us. Yes, yes, do it, do it. This is wonderful. We all get self governance. We all get Indian self determination. We all get Indian control. That's what I hear. I went to Washington several weeks ago. I met with some congressional people. Got all these and boy, I came back all excited. Wow, this is this is real. And so on. I shared it with my board of education and said, "Let's let's get on, folks. Let's get on." So I'm challenging my staff as the head leader for the department. We have to get better. We have to strive for higher excellence, higher standards, higher quality, higher professionalism. We're going to get the Navajo people to understand. But let's overcome those. Let's get back on our feet. Let's get refocused and let's do it better this time. So that's what I talk about every day at the office. That's kind of, but that's the only way to operate in education. Education is serious business. Serious business. Sometimes you don't have a second chance. So if this thing all works out as in vision, by golly, I'm going to be clapping. I'm going to, I'm going to be saying, what you go, what you go, what you go. But the needle lift, but the needle lift. She got up on this case. I want to just add that statement and do uh, you have any questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Hudson, go. Thank you. I thought we were going to be done at 1 o'clock. <laughs> I had an eye appointment at Flagstaff, but that's all right. Uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Lewis, for taking the leadership. Um, your talk this morning alleviated a lot of my fears, and just your mere presence uh, made the whole meeting pretty positive for me compared to the mini farms meeting that I went to, but that was bad. I left out of there feeling like there was no hope. But now I feel better. So thank you for your leadership. I really appreciate it. And thank you to Bill Khan for being a good host as well. Never get bad food in the rent schools. Always good food. I'm going to um, change my approach here a little bit. I'm going to speak not as a school administrator, but as a uh, grandpa. 
of a child in Tuba City Boarding School. I have a grandchild that lived with my wife and I for about four years. He's eight years old, he's in the third grade. He goes to Tuba Boarding School. Um, I have two girls in high school who went through Tuba City Boarding School. They're both honor students. One is a senior, she's an honors function, she's going to college in June, right after May graduation. My little one's in the gifted program. She's a freshman out of Sanford University. They went through to a boarding school. I have a 26-year-old son who was, who I moved to to a boarding school when he was in the seventh grade because I wasn't happy with the public school. So to a boarding is for sure a performing school. My biggest concern is to the city boarding school it doesn't have a voice in this whole process. None of the DIE schools are allowed to participate in this public comment. And that is a great concern to me. Are there any DIE board members or administrators here? Just Jackie, I'm surprised she's here. Better not tell her boss that she's here going to get in trouble. <laughs> that is my biggest concern. They have to be a part of this process. Those 1,500 kids at Tuba Boarding have a right to be represented here. I am asking the Navajo Nation Board of Education to look out for the Bureau of Schools. Go across the street and yell at Emily, I don't know, she's in charge over there, and tell her to release her grip on the federal employees. It's ridiculous. There is no way this whole concept's going to be successful if we exclude a huge population of Navajo kids. Up the road here, about 10 miles, you have Seba Delta. Is there anybody here from St. Adelphi? This is a part of their community. They are not represented here. That is just unfair to those kids. Unfair. It's like they're the stepchild that nobody wants. And I need the policy makers and the board members and HESI to go over to the BIE and tell them we need to be represented. I'm speaking as a grandpa for my grandson. I don't want him to fail. I want him to succeed. My 26-year-old already graduated from college. Now he quit working. No kids, no bills. So he went to work on graduate degree at NAU. He's a product of Tupac boarding school. I want my grandson to be the same way. <clears throat> and now I'm not going to be a grandpa. I'm going to be a grad school administrator. I'm asking for time with the Navajo Board of Ed, our school board at Shanto, we do work sessions to educate our board to keep them informed. I'm asking for opportunity to do a work session with the Navajo Board of Ed. We need to hear from the grad schools. I'm also asking for time for the HESI committee to hear. I want a work session with them. You can't limit yourself to Hearing only from Dodi, we have to hear from the grant schools as well. So I'm asking for time, I'm asking for an audience, just to give you some ideas on some of the work we're doing. Mr. Curley here and Marie, we've been meeting every month. We dissected the feasibility studies, we've generated many, many, many ideas on how this thing can work. And I'm so glad Dr. Lewis said that we're going to amend it and modify it and change it. Because we want our input to be heard in order for this thing to make it work. Given as it is, now it's going to fail. It's going to fail miserably if we do it the way it's written. So we have to have a voice within the system. <clears throat> uh, the other thing, some things we have no control over. Uh, I really frown on the Obama administration leaving less than two years, and then there's a sense of urgency 
and we and we work sloppily because we're trying to be a feather in President Obama's hat before he leaves. We need to take it slow. We need to do it right. The system has to be in place before we even do any transfer of authority. That's really what I call it, a transfer of authority. So I, I don't want the Obama administration to make us rush and do a bad job. So we don't really have any control over that. Maybe whoever the Navajo Nation president will be may have some control. The other thing we don't have any control over is the state of Arizona. If you pay attention to the state of Arizona, they're looking at common core, the Arizona State College and Career Readiness. They're talking about throwing it out. We've expended hundreds of thousands of dollars to implement that. And then there's a threat of it being thrown out. That's crazy. So um, we, we have to be flexible. And, um, I have a lot to say, but I'll save it for Great Hills next week. Thank you. Something to look forward to. Uh, I have three questions. One is, I'm still asking, and no one has given me an answer on the accountability workbook. Is the initial still in the Department of Education? Has that been approved? Okay, so that's the true story then, because the day he said it's the amendment that hasn't been approved, no, when corrupted. But I heard otherwise at the Navajo Nation Council. Okay, get conflicting stories. Okay, now I know. I like to see that book, whatever it is. And the second one is, after this is going, going to affect, will the schools still be subject to reauthorization? They go off something. Now, it's a long, lengthy process I went through as a new board member. And I thought, what in the world? And then, you know what? I went to Dodie. I went back there to your office. They're full of dust just on the shelf. That's the other one. Um, senior Momo. <laughs> Re regarding the opposition, on, on the accountability workbook, according to Dr. Uh, Calvin White, who is the main person behind this piece of work, he says we presented it to the BIA, BIE thinking that they have oversight. BIE, they in this book now, that's the guy, take it to the U.S. Department of Education, go to Ash, you're under the Department of Interior Accomplishment of the Year, we not start on that. The accountability work of AGA, the work of Haas and the Gay, Oho Haas and the Gay, Slither Hate, Egwe, Yeg, Bena, and the Story of the Hapelia. That's what that law says, A, the Tower of the Nation, of the Yeg, the Hashik, and A, we have a plan, but it has not been approved at that level. Somebody challenged us and said, if we are a sovereign nation, 